The United Kingdom, Home to Royalty, West End Shows, Big Ben, The Beatles, Alcohol Abuse, Fish and Chips, and Love Island. I moved to the homeland, and more specifically, the city of London, six years ago from New Zealand. Now the question I've consistently got was, Why would you move to bloody old England from New Zealand? That's a great question. Why would I want to leave Middle Earth? You know, the place where everyone leaves their lifestyle blocks to work in jandals, munches on pies. It's always blowing the pie. I'm hungry. Always blowing the pie. Safer communities together. LMP and pineapple lumps, before then kicking off to the beach at 2pm to have a surf. Whilst all of this has an element of truth, the UK has always been a huge appeal to me. For most Kiwis, our ancestry links back to the UK and many of our generation had grandparents grow up there. But the idea that you could travel to a different country with a different culture in a matter of a few hours blew my mind. Bear in mind, New Zealand is in the middle of bum fuck nowhere. We're so isolated from the world that in order to travel internationally, you have to get on a flight for three hours to get to a country that's basically the same country, but with shitter accents, worse sports teams, mullets, and animals that will kill you when you step outside the house. Back off! Uh, back off! Go away! In addition to travel... The idea of money was right up on the list to move to the UK. After having qualified as a trained exile monkey, it was very much a rite of passage to go overseas and double your salary for a few years. So that's what my girlfriend and I decided to do as well. We applied for our visas and off we headed to the UK. When we landed in London's Stansted Airport, we got our first lesson. Stansted Airport is not in London. We jumped on the bus to actual London, looking out of the window, seeing the monstrosities of council estate buildings, kids in balaclavas, and tagging on shop walls. Fortunately for us, we grew up on Coronation Street and East Enders, so the expectation of England being palaces and wealth wasn't all that we knew. After settling in, you get a pretty good glimpse into the culture, and the culture of drinking. I thought us Kiwis had a drinking problem. But by God, do we get outdone by the Brits in terms of pure volumes. Pubs really are the heart of the community, with many within walking distance or wherever you are. It makes sense. When the weather is utterly shit for nine months of the year, what else are you to do other than sit indoors and drink piss? After years of smoking and drinking, you do sometimes look at yourself and think, Yep. You know, just sometimes in between the first cigarette with coffee in the morning to that 400th glass of corner shop piss at 3 a.m. <laughs> You do sometimes look at yourself and think, this is fantastic. <laughs> I'm in heaven. But when the sun does come out for four days of each year, what better way to spend it than drinking piss outside the pub? This blew my mind. People will pay six quid for a pint London. and stand in the street outside the pub. At that point, the only difference from you being at the pub and the local homeless man shouting obscenities in the street is that he only paid two pounds for a can of beer at the Tesco next door. After you have acquired your newfound alcoholism, next comes cocaine. It appears to be so commonly accepted that it might as well be included in your McDonald's Happy Meal. Superhands has taken four grams of coke to relax him for his speech. It didn't relax him. Everything's fucked. Outlook. When you finally begin to converse with the average Brit, the first thing that you'll say is, you're a miserable prick, aren't you? Generally, any positive will be quickly followed up with a negative. This may sound depressing, but what you realise is that the people are honest, and unlike our friends across the Atlantic, you don't have to face fake niceties or smiles. It's all that, oh, hi, how was your day? And I think, fuck off. What are you talking about how was my day? My day has got absolutely nothing to do with you. Negativity aside, politeness remains the key to the UK way. You are given the benefit of the doubt and will be respected until you break the rules, whether written or unwritten. So you better learn quick. If you talk on the tube during the morning commute or stand on the left of the escalator, not offer the handyman a cup of tea, you will learn the true art of passive aggression. Weather. It's a go-to conversation here. People love to talk about how terrible it is. When it's winter, it's too cold. When it's summer, it's too hot. I'm hot. It is well hot. Might be too hot. Might be. No one is ever happy with the weather here. You will only hear positive weather on those occasions when your neighbours Roy and Margaret spend seven days at the all-inclusive in Benidorm, Spain, sporting their new cancerous sunburns that they take so much pride in. Another key part of culture is the hate for the French. 
uh, the fucking baguette eating dickhead frog. The French represent what England is not. A lack of manners, good looks, and a superiority complex. However, there is one thing that triumphs the English's hate for the French. That's Scotland's hate for the English. Natural enemies, like Englishmen and Scots. And the Irish's hate for the English. And the Welsh hate for the English. And then the rest of Europe's hate for English tourists. English tourists are properly mental, specifically those who go to Spain. They are the equivalent of the Australians in Bali. The moment one of these English gremlins arrived to the airport, regardless of time, a full English breakfast washed down by a few pints of Stella for the lads and glasses of Prosecco for the ladies, it is not only the standard, but the expectation. By the time they arrive at their all-inclusive hotel, they're drunk and remain drunk until they are stuck on a shuttle back to the airport a week later. Rinse, repeat, every year. One thing the British are king of the world in is humour. Their humour can be broken down to three things. One, sarcasm. So didn't the tour sell out before your debut album came out? Yeah. Is How that, is that possible? Just raw sex appeal. <laughs> it's safe to assume any time someone is talking to you, they are being sarcastic and don't mean anything that they are saying. If you lack any social ability, you may miss this and not realise you're the butt of their joke. Even when purely, it's for their own entertainment. Two, self-deprecation. Started making it, had a breakdown. Bon appetit. Self-deprecating humour is another cornerstone of their humour. You better get used to talking down about yourself or you will be seen as an arrogant twat that is out of touch with reality. 3. Banter. The reason self-deprecation is so important is because it takes jabs at yourself before your friends pick you apart for your largest insecurities in the spirit of banter. So if you want to survive, you better get some thick skin. Television. Because of the UK humour, it produces some of the best television. Unlike American shows, it's relatable and doesn't take itself too seriously. Actors look like normal people and the characters are the jokes rather than making the jokes. It's witty and usually subtle. There is no need for laugh tracks because laughter is earned. However, there is a dark side to the UK TV and that's the reality shows. If you haven't been living under a rock or don't have self-respect, then you probably have seen Love Island. It's like a zoo for beautiful idiots who rely purely on makeup and steroids. Each week, the UK sit around the tellies and gain reassurance that whilst their lives aren't that great, at least they know what a country is. Essex is a continent. No, no it's a county. Oh, what, a country? A county. What's the a difference county. between a county and a country? Country. So a country is like England. Yeah. So Wales is, is in country. Cardiff. Not Cardiff's country. the capital of yeah, Wales. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I'm from Liverpool, so I live in a country. Not Liverpool's a city. A city. Another form of a reality shit show is the politics. Be a good boy, young man! Be a good boy! I've been here for six years, and in that time there has been six prime ministers. I think a lot of foreigners have a view of the UK being the pinnacle of intellect and rational thought. However, that does not apply to the UK Parliament. Politicians appear to be primarily out-of-touch rich kids, who probably have never ridden a public bus or enjoyed a three-pound Tesco meal deal. I have friends who are aristocrats, I have friends who are upper class, I have friends who are, you know, working class, but I'm not working class, but... These are the people who like to have arguments as children and found a way to continue that into adulthood by joining the political race. They have no they questions to, to put to you. Are you saying they're abdicating their duty Thank to scrutinise me? Okay. Are you saying they, don't, okay. they haven't the guts yes. to put questions no to, to me? What Great it, um, supine protoplasmic invertebrate jellies. Many of which struggle to follow the rules that they themselves put in place. Those of us who make these rules have got to stick by them and that's why I've got to resign. Let me say immediately that I've paid the fine and I once again offer a full apology. The UK gets a lot of flack that the food isn't very good. Sure, British food may not be the most inventive, but it's mostly comfort foods that pair nicely with a pint of lager. And because there are so many foreigners like myself destroying this country, you can literally get any type of cuisine your heart desires. OK, how many times a week, on average, do you eat curry? Oh, no, I don't like curry. No, I prefer English food, you get me? Like pizza or Chinese. All in all, I love the UK. It's my second home. You get what you get and there's no shame in that. Like any place, there's good and there's bad, but the UK really has something for everybody, and I think it's right up there as one of the best places to be.